this week on Royally Us. Kate and William touch down in Ireland while Harry sits down with the Queen. Plus, Hollywood is rallying around the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. You know, we're very proud of, uh, of the royal family. You know, I'm a big royalist. You know, I'm a huge fan of the monarchy and always have been. And we take an inside look at the royal love triangle that rocked the palace. There she is on this magical day. And the one thing that she is focusing on is the image of Camilla. We've got that plus so much more in today's Royally Us. Hello to our fellow royal lovers and welcome to Royally Us, where each week we will give you a royal roundup on our favorite family. I'm Christina Garibaldi and I am joined by royal commentator Carly Ledbetter. Hi Carly. Hello. How's how are it going? Pretty good. I like our, um, our holiday coordination. I know, bringing lots of cheer today. <laughs> exactly. Now of course Carly is a royal expert from HuffPost and will help me break down everything on the royal beat. So let's get started with a roundup of the royal headlines. And to kick things off we have to talk about Duchess Kate and Prince William because they have Touchdown in Ireland. They have, mm -hmm. and Kate would love your colors. She would, right yes. Now. I, I, I'm feeling uh, very festive, like Kate. Yes, <laughs> uh, they are there for three days to carry out a lot of different engagements. Yesterday, we saw them with the president of Ireland, who has a Burmese mountain dog that's mm -hmm. super cute. So cute. <laughs> um, they have been with the president of I or prime minister of Ireland separately, and then today they're going to help out with. Um, seeing some kids and talking about mental health once again. So great, mm -hmm. yes. And she looked fabulous getting off the plane in her all green, all luck green. of the Irish. I know, I was calling it 50 shades of green yes. yesterday. It was literally as much green as you could put into <laughs> really? any accessory. Green shoes, green mm -hmm. headband, but yeah. But and then she made it look good, like did. always. And then later when they were pulling a pint of Guinness, which is just learning how to pour a mm -hmm. pint of Guinness, she changed into yet another green another look. Green look. Yeah. I feel like they drink a lot when they go on these trips. They do. <laughs> And a Royals reporter was saying it's so weird to see them holding a pint of yeah. Guinness like they're one of us, which <laughs> right. they're not. But also watching them learn how to pour it and sip yeah. it. You're always just reminded, like, whenever Prince William's drinking something, mm -hmm. it's like, that looks unnatural. It does. Yeah. It looks totally unnatural. <laughs> he never pours his own drink. No. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. So now while they are in Ireland, Harry is actually back in the UK for the First, oh no, he was there, he was in Scotland a couple weeks ago. He was, yeah. Right. He got back last week, mm -hmm. and um, while Kate and William sort of were urgently pulled to Ireland to ease Brexit tensions, yes. um, it does seem like the timing is a little Ooh. suspicious. <laughs> suspicious. Yeah, know. just this, this overlap, this trip that was announced on February 24th, which wasn't too long ago. Right. Um, yeah, so we know that he met with some members of the royal family, but we wonder if we'll see Kate and William yeah. before everyone meets the Harry's in. Day. William's out. <laughs> yep, and we're going to see Megan. I'm expecting some Megan airport picks today. Oh, like totally. she's arriving. Yes, yeah. yeah. So we did hear that Harry did have a heart to heart with the Queen. He did. We, we heard maybe a four hour meeting. Yes. The two of them sat down, and this is the first time that they sat down since they announced that they were separating from the royal family. Yes, mm -hmm. um, they did have this heart to heart. The official comment from the palace, of course, is we don't comment on how the royals spend their private mm -hmm. time. But we know. Um, but we know. <laughs> and yes, the last time that they actually had to sit down together was at Sandringham, right. where they ironed out, Kate, Charles, the Queen, and William ironed out the details of the separation and the step back. Mm -hmm. So this was the first time there was no official business. It was really just a gran and yeah. her grandson. I love that. Mm -hmm. I wonder, like we did hear hear from sources that if Harry ever wanted to come back, right. she would be willing with open arms. Definitely. I'm sure that's the case. Yeah, and that's why they have that one year uh, review right. after, you know, the, the Sussexes complete March 31st, mm -hmm. 2020 to 2021. Yeah. Just to say that the door is always open if maybe you don't like living your own private life and you want to come back. And of course, since Harry and Meghan are together, Meghan would also be welcomed back with open yeah. arms. I wonder if they will change their mind. I know. I kind of feel like they might. I really just want to fast forward 10 years into I know. the future, <laughs> if that's possible, if we could get some more theories about right, that. Right, yeah. But I wonder if, yeah, they'll see what the opportunities are, what they can actually do. Um, you know, now that they're not royals, technically, or they've stepped back, they are royals, mm -hmm. um, but they've lost that uh, royal protection against sure. paparazzi. So I wonder if they'll find more of an invasion, they might. a privacy 
now that they're not protected from, you know, photographers. Yeah, or I mean, I wonder if maybe a year from now they'll get what they wanted and kind of be able to do a little bit of both. Right. Maybe the queen will be like, okay, I can maybe I can maybe do that a little bit. Because you also have to think of baby Archie too. He's right. not going to be able to grow up around his cousins right. if he's in Canada. And, you know, Megan's not very close with her family either. So, I mean, I'm sure they'll make a ton of friends. But, right. you yes. know, <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, they're, they're not going to have that close family bond. Right. And they mm -hmm. will be coming back to the UK a lot, but how much is a lot. Sure. Yeah, so we'll see if, you know, Harry's never really, he took a gap year to Cape Town mm -hmm. when he was growing up, but obviously he came back, so we'll see if he misses his family because yeah. no one knows what the firm is like except him. He lives in this weir weird world of celebrity and also being a royal and having these duties. Yeah. So we'll see if he feels the call to duty. Totally. I wonder how Megan feels going back. I would no. be so nervous. I know, because also it's not your family, so yeah. we all know what it's like seeing your, right. your in-laws or yeah. your, your family again. But yeah, it's just, you know, she left and went to Canada and Harry continued the talk, so mm -hmm. it's actually been since around like January 9th since she's seen the family. Time. And I think Archie is staying back. He is. He is staying back. Yes. So that'll be six months, I believe, since he's been... I mean, he doesn't know what's going on. I mean, right. he's a baby. Yeah. So, he's like, not even, I think he's like eight months old right, right. now. So he but. has no clue. But still, I mean, we heard that the queen is a bit disappointed that Archie didn't make the trip because, you know, she wants to have a bond with him as well. Right, and same with mm -hmm. Kate and William. They want yeah. their three kids to get to know their cousin mm -hmm. too. So that hasn't been officially confirmed by the palace right. yet. So I think we'll see day of. But once we see those airport pictures, we'll be able to know if we'll Archie's there I can't wait. Um, well, it's nice that the queen is giving Harry some support and they were mm -hmm. able to have that one-on-one one time as just grandma and grandson definitely which is, which is great and we know that he's been a long time favorite I mean mm -hmm. if you remember back to 2012 he had his grandmother do a video in response to the Obama's, the Obama's he, where he mm -hmm. had her do you know the mic drop roasted, yeah the mic drop <laughs> Boom. And I feel like only Harry could make this. I love that. Do that. I know. That was one of my favorite videos of the Me two too. of them. It was so great. Well, but Harry isn't just getting support from the Queen. He's actually getting a lot of support from Hollywood, yes. including the one and only David Beckham. Take a look. Watching Harry grow over the years and also William, you know, they're, they're, they're sons to not just our country, but, but the world. Um, and, you know, seeing him grow into being a, a great father you know that's one thing that he'd always he'd always cared about and to be honest it's the it's the one thing that I I don't get involved in any of the other stuff to be honest so I I just hope that Harry's okay and he's and he's you know becoming the best father and, and I can see that, that that's that that's happening I love that David Beckham spoke out about this, but he didn't mm -hmm. want to get too political about the whole thing. Right, yeah. which I think is a really safe move if mm -hmm. you still want to be friends with yes. Harry and Meghan. <laughs> and they've been friends since about 2010. Actually, mm -hmm. David and Victoria went to the uh, first royal wedding or yeah. the biggest royal wedding of, mm -hmm. of our generation, which was Kate and Williams. Yes. Um, so they've been longtime friends. Victoria befriended Meghan when she moved over to the UK for the first time. Oh, that's cool. There was a little drama between there the was, two, yes. apparently, mm -hmm. um, that Victoria was accused, at least in the tabloids, of selling stories with Meghan, and she was said to be so embarrassed, and mm -hmm. she would never do that. And apparently the story in question came from a beauty salon leak. Uh, so it seems that all is well. You know, David's mm -hmm. comfortable talking about Harry, um... Yeah, so it's nice to see that show of support. Sure, you got to be careful in those beauty salons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you do. No, no idle chatter. But yeah, he no. said that he loves seeing his friend, you know, grow up and mm -hmm. become a young father, and said that he always has to be happy. And it seems like this yeah. is making him happy. So, um, but David wasn't the only one to speak out, right? He wasn't actually. Mm -hmm. Helen Mirren spoke out, and she has played the queen before, yes. so she, you know, has an understanding of <laughs> totally. what royal life is like, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but she was asked by Variety, you know, what do you think of Meghan Markle and Harry? and she said their instincts are absolutely correct. Uh, she said that Meghan was such a welcome addition to the royal family. She did mm -hmm. everything right. She was so wonderful and gracious. Um, but she really applauded their decision to step back. And she yeah. said, now the tabloids will find someone else to pick on, maybe me. So <laughs> we'll see if they'll zoom right. in on her yeah. now. Well, the, I mean, the tabloid drama hasn't really stopped since it they hasn't. left. And it's so funny because, I mean, we've talked about this before. We haven't even seen Meghan in forever. Right. You know, we've seen Harry at, like, public appearances, but I've... We haven't seen her at all. We haven't, you yeah. know, save for those paparazzi right, photos course, yeah. in Vancouver, mm -hmm. which they were not happy about. But yeah, they've been doing a lot of under the radar yeah. appearances where there are no photos. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just hearing about it through our own royal sources and everything. So once they do step out, I feel like it's 
um, I talked to a few experts and they said it's good that they're laying low for a few yeah. months and then we'll get to see their, you know, they're going to finish their royal duties, which will be so exciting yes. to see them together. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see how they step out as a couple in Canada or North America, maybe in their new home in L.A. Oh, we'll have to wait and see. Oh, uh, speaking of Los Angeles, so we have to clear up some rumors. So let's yes. spill the royal tea. Now this week we heard that Megan is actually trying to get back in front of the camera, maybe mm -hmm. as a superhero. <laughs> so this is false yeah. <laughs> um, just because Lainey Gossip had a really good point about this where it takes so long to be in a superhero movie. Oh, yeah. If you're in the Avengers, you could be in it for 12 years. Sure. So this would be a time commitment that she wouldn't do mm -hmm. um, just because I think they're really looking to launch their, their global charity and that'll be at the forefront. We'll see more behind the scenes stuff like mm -hmm. the voiceovers with yep. Disney. But can you imagine seeing oh God, the can't. Duchess on screen? <laughs> I can't. Actually, I can. I yeah. do think in maybe a few years mm -hmm. she will do something, maybe something small. I don't think that she'll do like a big like right. lead role. Uh, who knows? Right. Who knows? She could be the first Duchess to win an Oscar. I don't right. know. And there's such craziness between the royal fandom of Meghan and Kate. All I can imagine is Meghan acting in this movie and then people, you know, manipulating the Rotten yes. Tomato score or something. Right, So I yes. wonder if they would want it. The upside is great, but the downside is also yeah. super, super Yeah, great. totally. And we also heard that she will not be attending the Met Gala, correct? She won't, yeah. yes. I spoke with uh, Vogue UK, and mm -hmm. they told me that this rumor is categorically false. It was started by the tabloids, of course, saying that Meghan was going to appear at the Met Gala with Edward Innenfull, mm -hmm. who she did the, yes, the, the Vogue, Vogue. Um, issue with, which mm -hmm. would have made sense. And they said that Meghan was going to go for an androgynous look which is not something we've seen from her right. before. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think from the get-go, this really seemed fake and Vogue is all about denying it. Mm -hmm. But deny. wouldn't that be cool? Oh my God. Yeah. Deny, deny, deny. Deny, until, deny, deny. Until May. I know. Uh, yeah. We will see this one day though. She I feel like we loves will. fashion. She does. Yeah. Yes. She loves fashion, loves a good red carpet. She knows how to work them. So yes. we'll see what happens. And there are some um, Vogue Fashion Awards coming up this weekend where mm. it is rumored, um, no comment so far on this, that she will make an appearance. Fingers that crossed. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So another rumor that we want to clear up has to do with the Duchess of Cornwall. I feel yes. like we never talked we talk about Miss Camilla, but here Camilla we go. Some yes. time. <laughs> so it is. So is it true that she will not assume the title? of Queen when Prince Charles takes over the crown. She won't. Mm -hmm. So um, this started popping up again this week. They got married in 2005, and when Charles and Camilla married, uh, Clarence House, which is their sort of representative, like people have palaces, mm -hmm. they have Clarence House. Uh, Clarence House cleared up any, any sort of Queen rumors and said that Camilla would be this new title, which no one's ever had before, Princess Consort. Mm. And that was because, you know, Princess Diana was just so beloved by everyone that they didn't want to take away, you know, she would have been the eventual queen, sure. so they wanted to give Camilla something different. Yeah. And actually, Camilla technically is Princess of Wales, mm -hmm. but because Diana had that title and was so beloved, she goes by the Duchess of Cornwall. Mm. Um, but it's, you know, we haven't seen this play out yet, and some people are saying that when the queen passes and Charles assumes the throne, that uh, he may try and make her queen, queen. consort. Oh. Yeah, but Clarence House reiterated this week, Still Princess Still Prince. Consort. So no. this, is, this has been in place for quite some time. It's been in place yeah. for a really long time. It popped up again this week. People just have, because it's been, you know, years. 15 yeah. years since mm -hmm. we really thought about it. So mm -hmm. now, you know, as everyone gets older and people are talking about who's going to be, you know, king or when they're going to be king, sure. it popped back up again. Interesting. It so is. interesting. The power of Diana all right. these years later. Yeah. Right. And I think, you know, so many people like Camilla. She is a favored royal and mm -hmm. public sentiment has really changed over the yeah. years. So there is a better chance now that she could be queen consort. Definitely. And people would be okay with that. Yeah. So I want to continue our conversation about Camilla and Diana yes. and Prince Charles because this actually takes us right into our royal history mm -hmm. moment of the week. Um, CNN has a brand new series. We've, we've actually talked about this yes. before. The Windsors Inside the Royal Dynasty. And in the next episode, they take us inside Charles and Diana's royal wedding, which got a little dramatic. Take a look. There she is on this magical day. And the one thing that she is focusing on is the image of Camilla. Charles never stopped really adoring Camilla. He hasn't ever really gotten her out of his mind. So obviously Camilla was at 
Charles and Diana's she wedding. Was. I mean, talk about awkward. Very awkward. <laughs> and, you know, we've talked about this on the show before that Charles did feel pressured to go into the marriage. He was mm -hmm. 31 when he met a 19 year old Diana. She's so young. It was a quick courtship, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because everyone was like, we have this playboy prince, but we need heirs. We want to yeah. see him settle down and get married. He'd previously dated Camilla. He sort of dawdled. He didn't propose mm -hmm. to her. She quickly married someone else. Um, and then he found Diana, but Diana did not want to go through with the wedding the night before. And uh, when she spotted Camilla at the wedding, it was it was really all that she could fixate I, on. I would imagine. I mean, your whole color probably drains from your face. Like, here is the woman that my husband is really in love with. Right. At my wedding, like, right. I absolutely no get out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, Harry at his wedding, he had three exes. Yes, three exes. Wow, <laughs> that's true. He will not be at my wedding. No, I can tell you that. Not. No. no, totally. Um, but yeah. It is, it's crazy to see that, you know, Camilla was so hated because of the Charles mm -hmm. and Diana drama. And now we're just talking about her being a favored royal. Yeah, it, I mean, she kind of did like a 180, it seems like. A pe people really have started to embrace her a little mm -hmm. bit more. Yeah, and it took a lot of time. It really took a long time because, you know, after Diana died in 1997, mm -hmm. Charles and Camilla had been public about their relationship before, right. but they waited eight years to mm -hmm. actually get married, and they got married in a civil ceremony, not the Church of England, just as sort of like an acknowledgement of this is our second marriage. The queen only attended the reception because mm -hmm. as she's the head of the Church of England. Sure, she can't really. Yeah, she couldn't really like mm -hmm. approve of the marriage. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Clarence House did a really good job of sort of sending out Camilla in small doses yes. until she became more favored yeah. over the years. I, you, I mean, we talk about how much pressure Meghan and Kate get, get from the media, but right. imagine how much pressure she must have felt right. during that time. It had to be excruciating for her, I would imagine. Yes, because she was really the most hated woman mm -hmm. in America. After, you know, Diana acknowledged there were three of us in the yeah. marriage, I, you know, people did not like Camilla, no. and for yeah. her and Charles to go move forward with a relationship, I mean, that's the kind of pressure that I cannot understand. No, and it, and this put so much pressure on Charles and Diana's marriage, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, this kind of broke Diana. It did. Yeah. Yeah, and because she knew, even on the honeymoon, mm -hmm. um, something fell out of one of Charles's books, and it was a picture of Camilla, oh and God, it's, so messed up. <laughs> it, it's just, she knew from the beginning, like, even yeah. before the marriage, you know, was set, that there were going to be the three of them, and that really contributed to her eating disorder. The mm -hmm. eating disorder contributed to her mental state, yeah. so, you know, when people describe Diana as unstable, or some people in the royal family couldn't figure out why she couldn't get it together, mm -hmm. and something like that, but she was like it all stems from knowing that my husband loves someone loves else. Somebody else and she mm -hmm. was so young she was too 19. 19 years old right. I mean that's crazy right. to to deal with all of that at mm -hmm. such a young age and to feel so alone in the marriage too which is, I know that she said that she felt right. like she had no other help mm -hmm. no other allies because she married into the firm this family of course they're all gonna be on Charles's side and yeah. he's you know, going to be the future king one day. So she really didn't have any say. Yeah. Do we know what Camilla's relationship like is like with Harry and William? Very cordial. Yeah. You know, they are. They do appear at events with their stepmother. Mm -hmm. She actually has children of her own, which we rarely uh, see. I, yeah. Right. Rarely. Yeah. 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 Two kids, and mm -hmm. her ex-husband died a few years ago. But I really am interested in her ex-husband Andrew Parker Bowles yeah. to know, you know, the extent of how much he knew, because obviously we know what sure, Diana yeah. knew about the marriage, but. Uh, that was an interesting marriage never as well. spoke out. I know. Oh my God. So yeah. much drama. I know. Uh, That's what we think that we have a lot of royal drama now. And right. And we do. Mm -hmm. But there's been, I mean, Camilla and Charles were in this phone tapping scandal sure. oh, where that's right. I forgot yeah, that. things mm -hmm. got really dirty if you want to look that up. So <laughs> yeah. they have there's always been drama, you know, always. from the beginning of time. From the beginning of time. If you want to know more about Charles and Diana and Camilla's love triangle, right. make sure to watch the Windsors Inside the Royal Dynasty. Sunday, March 8th at 10 p.m. With Commonwealth Day right around the corner, we will probably see Charles, Camilla, Harry, Meghan, William, Kate, all together. Yes, so, and all the little ones, and too. And all the little ones. <laughs> so there will be many people that will be celebrating and that they may come in contact with some members of the royal family. So if you find yourself in the presence of royalty, we want to make sure that you are fully prepared. So we put together a list of some of the wackiest royal family rules to make sure you are ready for a royal meetup. Take a look. The Queen is a fantastic role model to, uh, to lead that, as she has done for the last um, 90 years. She's a role model with some serious rules. And if you're lucky enough to ever be in Queen Elizabeth's presence, you better pay attention because there's a specific way you have to behave. 
Here are six of the wackiest royal family rules. Now here in the States, we may call her Kate, but members of the royal family are expected to be addressed by their full given names, Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge. So, kind of makes us wonder, does William call her Kate or Catherine beyond closed doors? It is, it is a bit tricky. Having a royal wedding? Not without having Queen Elizabeth sign off on the dress. That's right, Kate couldn't wear McQueen and Meghan couldn't rock Givenchy without the Queen saying, I do. If you're a fan of garlic, don't expect it on your plate the next time you're dining with the Queen. The Queen is reportedly not a fan of the ingredient, so it's officially left out of all meals. Don't think about using words like toilet, couch, or perfume. Those are to be substituted with lavatory, sofa, and scent. As we know, the Brits had their own way of talking, but the royals take it to a whole new level. It makes such a tremendous difference. Royal rules state that fingernails are to be practical and kept in a natural shade. Any bright colors are meant for the queen's wardrobe, while nails for the royal ladies should remain clear or pale pink. Had we thought of that? Now the queen is apparently not a fan of this style of shoe, so keep those in your closet. However, Meghan did bend this fashion rule while in South Africa. However, the queen was not present. It's not easy being a yeah, lady. I Oh, those royals have so many rules. Those royals, they do. <laughs> so before we wrap up, we have to check in on the royal kiddos in Pine Size Palace. Mm -hmm. And this is actually a bit of a scary situation. It's something that everybody around the world is dealing with, including right. the royals, the coronavirus. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when William and Kate went lambing with their kids a few weeks ago, that was for school break, called half term over mm -hmm. there. And when they got back from half term, it seems that people at... Uh, George and Charlotte's school, who had gone to Italy, Yikes. brought back or may have brought back coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So there were about four students that were identified last week. Um, Buckingham Palace and Kensington Palace, of course, had no official comment. Mm -hmm. uh, but Thomas's Battersea came forward to say, you know, those kids are in self isolation. We're taking the utmost precautions. I think 33 schools are closed in the UK yes. right now. But it's affected other royal events yeah. too. Mm -hmm. um, the Queen has started wearing gloves mm. when shaking mem or shaking hands with members of the public, and it looks like it might hit Prince Harry's Invictus Games. Right. As well. Yes. Yeah, because that's coming up. It is coming up. Yeah. Those are going to be in May. Mm -hmm. um, and Prince William had a bit of a gaffe yesterday. He was sort of channeling his grandfather, Prince Philip, and saying some not appropriate things. <laughs> he joked about the coronavirus oh, yesterday. No, which, William. Too soon. Yeah. Way too soon. Way too soon. He was caught on camera at the uh, Guinness store factory saying, oh, I'm sure everyone's thinking the royals are bringing the coronavirus and shaking hands. And it's oh, like, no. No. William, just... Oh, just we so rarely get a William, we you really know, did. We, moment. He's always so on point. Right, but now that Philip's retired from private or right. public life, maybe William's like, I'm going to step <laughs> in. step and in, say what I want. I know, so yeah. we would say way too early for anyone royal yeah. or not to joke about yeah. that. I wonder if any of the events next week will be affected by this at all, you know? But right. I mean, who knows? I mean, I guess it's a wait and see type of thing. It really mm -hmm. is. But yeah, everyone, wash your hands. Wash your hands. Royals yeah. included. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, Carly, thank you so much as always. Always thank so much you. fun. For much more on all the royals, make sure to head on over to usmagazine.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.